right friends welcome back to news analysis and the features part of 25th week this is from 15th to 21st and we are going to discuss the following events this week usa to cut trans fats by 2018 what is the meaning of trans fat persons displaced by war conflict or persecution reached record ever levels of 60 million in the world then 800 years for magna carta what is meant by icbm then might of china can usa match it if you look at 10 years down the line then bcim corridor or k2k corridor what do you understand by k2k corridor these are the issues which we are going to deliberate this week let us look at the first issue usa to cut trans fats by 2018 trans fats these are the substances naturally available in the food products but their quantity increases the quantity of trans fats increase when the vegetable oils are hydrogenated when the oils are hydrogenated trans fats will increase that is the main cause of concern otherwise partially hydrogenated oils or phos are the main cause of trans fats right we are going to discuss in detail about this the use of trans fats in food products increased during the 1950s and you may ask what type of foods contain trans fats please look into this picture cakes pizzas pastries this is one type if you look into potato chips corn chips these are other type and please look into this picture french fries duff nuts fried chicken coffee cream deep fried snacks margarin so these are the food products which contain trans fats in abundant quantity and if you look into the history this trans fats usage increased during the 1950s and subsequently from the year 2006 when united states food and drug administration made the companies mandatory to publish the information of trans fats their usage reduced substantially in recent years now usa FDA that means Food and Drug Administration of uh, United States of America decided to reduce trans fats by 2018 and FDA has given time frame of 3 uh, years to control this uh, trans fats right we have discussed what type of uh, foods contain trans fats and these trans fats are artificially introduced into the food items by doing partial hydrogenation of oils right so let us look into the aspect what is the difference between saturated fat and unsaturated fat we have to start from the origin to understand trans fats please look into this picture left side is saturated fat saturated fat is the chain of carbon atoms are packed with hydrogen atoms the chain of carbon atoms are saturated with hydrogen atoms these saturated fats are obtained from meat as well as animal fats meats and animal fats contain saturated fats and these are dangerous for the human beings from health perspective right look into unsaturated fats unsaturated fats are basically vegetable oils and here the carbon atoms are not fully saturated with hydrogen atoms carbon atoms are not fully saturated with hydrogen atoms these are unsaturated fats and these are not dangerous for consumption saturated fats are dangerous for consumption unsaturated fats are not dangerous for consumption but the saturated fats are 
tasty and gives the rich flavor the biggest problem with human beings is saturated fats are tasty and gives the rich flavor and they are costly also and please look into this picture saturated unsaturated as we have already discussed and because of partial hydrogenation through vegetable oils because of partial hydrogenation through vegetable oils vegetable oils are unsaturated that means carbon atoms are not saturated with hydrogen atoms they are not dangerous they are not tasty they are normally in liquid form so so as to derive a substitute for saturated fats at the least cost please listen to carefully so as to derive a substitute for saturated fats at the least cost these vegetable oils are hydrogenated that means these vegetable oils are heated and hydrogen bubbles are sent because of this process these trans fats are created please look into the molecular structure of trans fats so this is the molecular structure of trans fat they are unsaturated fats but behaves like saturated fats why this hydrogenation is done hydrogenation is done so as to give rich flavor and not only that as a cost effective substitute for meat and animal products so because of partial hydrogenation of vegetable oils trans fats are produced trans fats are unsaturated fats but behaves like saturated fats right so because of this uh, trans fats which are produced because of partial hydrogenation of oils what happens they increase the level of ldl cholesterol what is ldl low density lipoprotein low density lipoprotein ldl cholesterol the problem with ldl cholesterol is it carries the cholesterol ldl means low density lipoproteins lipoproteins are complex proteins which carry fats lipoproteins are complex proteins which carry fats in the blood stream but the problem with this ldl cholesterol is it clogs the walls of the arteries blood is carried through the arteries the walls of the arteries will be clogged with ldl cholesterol the biggest problem with ldl cholesterol is they stick to the walls of the arteries that means they will be clogged and which may lead to cardiovascular diseases because of trans fats ldl cholesterol levels will be increased because of which cholesterol will be deposited on the walls of the arteries at the same time trans fats reduce the levels of hdl cholesterol hdl cholesterol is useful to the human beings because it acts as the scavenger and removes the sticky material on the walls of the arteries because of this as ldl cholesterol is increased as the bad cholesterol is increased and good cholesterol is reduced people are susceptible for cardiovascular diseases that's why united states of america took a decision to reduce trans fats consumption by the year 2018 and india is to learn a lot from it right friends after this let us look at the situation or scenario in the world today people displaced by war conflict or persecution reached a record over 60 million in 2014 in the world 6 crore people or 60 million people are displaced from their homes because of war internal conflict out of these figures around 
38 million people are internally displaced persons. You should know the difference between IDPs and refugees. If a person is displaced internally within his own country and staying somewhere within the boundaries of his own country, he is considered as internally displaced person. If the person is moving away from the boundaries of his country, they are considered as refugees. And because of political considerations, if a person is seeking permission to stay in another country, he is called asylum seeker. Right? The biggest problem in the world today is several countries are into strife. Syria is one example. Several people are displaced internally and several people migrated to adjacent countries of Lebanon, Turkey. And 60 million people are displaced and UNHCR, what is UNHCR? UNHCR is United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. UNHCR established in 1950, it is a United Nations organ. It, it looks into assistance to refugees and it says that humanitarian assistance is very difficult because as the figures are increasing and reach a record over 60 million. So, this shows the present situation in the world and if you look into this light, there are at least 15 conflicts have erupted during the past 5 years, which include 8 in Africa and 3 in Middle East. 15 conflicts arose during the past 5 years as per the report of UNHCR. Right. So, please look into this PPT for other details, look into the other issue, 800 years for Magna Carta. What is Magna Carta? In the year 1215, you have to go back 800 years. In the year 1215, England was interfering into the wars in France. England was frequently interfering into the internal affairs of France and because of which they raised taxes several times. They raised taxes several times. And if people are not paying taxes, severe punishments were imposed in those days. At that time, some of the barons revolted. Some of the barons revolted against the actions of the kings and yet the time King John of England wrote this charter. That means the main theme of this Magna Carta was no one is above the law. With that theme, subsequently they ruled it and this Magna Carta charter was written on a parchment. What is meant by parchment? You can look into this figure. Parchment is the dried skin of sheep dried sheep skin and on this parchment this charter was written Magna Carta charter was written with the quill pen. What is quill pen? Quill pen is made of feathers of swan or goose. Quill pen is made of feathers of swan or goose and this charter was written on parchment which is the dried sheep skin with quill pen and four are at present available. The original documents four in numbers are at present available and two are kept in British library and this Magna Carta Charter subsequently became the base for several constitutions. This was referred to when constitutions were made in several countries including United States of America and recently 800 year of Magna Carta celebrations were recently held and these celebrations were held in England near London and the Queen of England as well as the Prime Minister of UK David Cameron participated in the celebrations held near London. So, even after 800 years also, this Magna Carta became the symbol of equality which was drafted 800 years ago 
and now also people quite often say no one is above the law and the main theme emanated from this magna carta charter right friends look into the next one what do you know about icbms icbms are intercontinental ballistic missiles what is ballistic missile ballistic missile is during the initial trajectory it is guided but subsequently it will fall on the action of gravity initially it will be guided subsequently it will take the path because of gravity all of you know about the trajectory of a projectile during the initial launch this the ballistic missile will be guided and subsequently it will take the path of projectile and that's why it is called ballistic missile and cruise missile is something different cruise missile is normally guided entirely throughout its journey whereas the ballistic missile after the initial guidance will take the normal path because of gravity and there are four types one is a short range ballistic missile up to 1000 kilometers all of you are familiar with the prudvi in india prudvi is a class of a short range ballistic missile its range is up to 1000 kilometers then medium range medium range is 1000 to 3500 kilometers then intermediate range 3500 to 5500 kilometers and when the range is more than 5500 kilometers they are categorized as intercontinental ballistic missile that means the meaning is it can carry warhead from one continent to other continent over a distance of more than 5500 kilometers right warheads are two types conventional warhead and nuclear warhead conventional warhead uses rdx or tnt explosive material whereas nuclear warhead uses nuclear components that is the major difference between conventional warhead and nuclear warhead you should be clear about cruise missile and ballistic missile as well as what is the difference between conventional warhead and nuclear warhead and this intercontinental ballistic missile or icbm and if you look into this picture it is evident that russia is the leader in this intercontinental ballistic missiles and recently the premier of russia vladimir putin stated that they are going to introduce 40 intercontinental ballistic missiles and it heightened the tensions because west is moving artillery and tanks to the countries bordering russia right so intercontinental ballistic missiles at present only five countries have them and india recently tested agni range of intercontinental ballistic missile but it is yet to put it into service right friends look into the next issue might of china can usa match it let us look at the might of china as on date and if everything goes well after 10 years can usa will be in a position to match the might of china look into the first issue it is already the manufacturing giant in the world no one has any doubt about it most important point is it produces almost 50% of world's steel production out of 1600 million tons of finished steel 800 million tons is produced by china alone this indicates their uh, might in the manufacturing sector look into the other aspect new development bank or popularly known as brics bank is going to be established in shanghai in the very near future aiib asian infrastructure investment bank where 57 founding members are there including western powers is going to be started shortly it is going to be the rival for world bank as well as asian development bank look into the other issue china pakistan corridor it is going to connect gwadar port in pakistan Gwadar port is going to be connected with Kashgar in China and if it materializes they will have access to Arabian sea as well as middle east countries look into the other issue 
development of uh, east coast of africa they are going to develop several ports on the east coast of africa as well as uh, railway lines towards east africa if this materializes their access to african countries will be very easy look into the other aspect railway line in south america connecting atlantic and pacific oceans discussions are going on to connect atlantic and pacific oceans through peru as well as brazil around 3000 kilometers railway line if it materializes it will have access to interior south america look into the other aspect nicaragua canal nicaragua canal is being constructed by a chinese billionaire though it is not being promoted by the chinese government but chinese billionaire is planning to construct nicaragua canal which will be an alternative route to panama canal panama canal all of you are well aware it connects atlantic ocean as well as pacific ocean so nicaragua canal is going to be constructed by a chinese billionaire if you look into the other aspect it's going to come up with the bcim corridor as part of its silk route project bcim corridor is uh, bangladesh china india and myanmar corridor if you look into all these things 10 years down the line all these projects materialize china will become economic powerhouse of the world economic powerhouse to the world and if you look at 10 years down the line can the usa match the might of china that is the billion dollar question as on date right friends look into the last issue of this week this is k to k corridor or bcim corridor a boon for the northeast it was contemplated few years ago bcim corridor or k to k corridor this is part of uh, the ambitious uh, silk road project of uh, china bcim k to k means kolkata to kunming kolkata to kunming it starts at kolkata then dhaka subsequently it will go to silchar in assam imphal then it will go to mandalay and subsequently kunming in china mandalay and subsequently kunming in china so there are several advantages of it and one more important aspect is out of this 2800 kilometers of road already 2600 kilometers of all weather road is available because of the barriers it falls into four countries india bangladesh myanmar and china because of the barriers at entry points we are not able to have seamless connectivity otherwise the road is available except 200 kilometers of kacha road in myanmar only that is to be upgraded if that is upgraded and bottlenecks at the boundaries are removed then this 2800 kilometers of uh, highway will be operational only upgradation is to be done subsequently and once it materializes this k to k corridor materializes it will be a big boon to the northeastern part of the country northeastern part of the country can be easily accessed from kolkata and several bangladesh ports will come into operation several bangladesh ports will come into operation and because of this these uh, bangladesh ports are not being utilized properly to its utmost potential and they can reach their potential northeast india will be benefited myanmar will be benefited eastern india will be benefited and ultimately it will lead to the development of these areas as india china bangladesh and myanmar account for around 30 to 35% of the world population so india and china have to sit together to remove the hurdles or bottlenecks in connection with this project that is the need of the hour so friends with this we will conclude this features program of this week and next week we are going to discuss housing for all by 2022 can we achieve it another aspect is uh, can normalcy return to afghanistan one more aspect sentinel 2a satellite primarily to track health of crops 
e-payments, another salvo to control black money, these and some more items we are going to discuss in the news analysis and features program of 26th week. So please do join for other sessions like question and answer and lecture part. Have a nice day. Thank you.